Hello. So I'm going to be doing something a little bit different today. I am going to list off 10 things that I actually liked from the remake Beauty and the Beast movie because I am normally pretty harsh on this movie and so I wanted to put a positive video out there to hopefully balance out the negative at least a little bit. How I've decided to organize this video is as best as I can just kind of go chronologically through the movie. That is how I've decided to organize it so without further ado let's go ahead and jump in. My first compliment is actually one of my biggest. It is the opening dance scene of the movie. I love watching this scene. It is so entertaining. These dresses are gorgeous. They're inspired from this time period, a dress called the sack back dress with the wide hips and the cape on the back and the flaring lace on the elbow and the cream color palette I think is stunning as well. And then there's the dancers themselves. There is so much energy. They are so in sync. The choreography is fun and is very accommodating for the costumes and the space of the room. And it is all very staged well in that space. And my compliment actually does extend to the last dance scene in the movie. The dancing is fantastic. The ballroom and the people are just so beautiful and it's lovely to watch. And a sub compliment thrown out to Emma Watson. She actually is a very good dancer in this scene and she looks beautiful dancing along with Dan Stevens. I love watching that scene as well. My second compliment is a new character that they introduced, which is Cadenza the harpsichord. I just thought he was really fun. I liked how they added in a musical instrument as one of the characters because this is a musical movie and so he was able to be incorporated into the musical numbers and I thought his design was really fun. How they were able to make the keys look like his mouth and the stand kind of look like his face. He had a lot of character and I really liked that new household object that they added into the main cast. Third compliment is Luke Evans's Gaston. Gaston is pretty easily my favorite part of this movie. That character is flawed in this movie, but what I love specifically is Luke Evans's performance. He is so funny. He has my favorite jokes in the movie. He's so charming and he has so much energy and charisma. He just brings his character to life. He's so entertaining to watch. And also when he turns into a villain, he plays that so well as well. He's very intimidating, very sinister, and I love watching him in this movie. And he's the best singer of the main cast by far. It's time to take some action, boys. It's time to follow me. Love Luke Evans. Fourth compliment is the design of the castle and its grounds. I think they are stunning and very creative. Everything has so much movement. It makes it feel very fairy tale like and there is so much detail and life in all of the designs. It's very ornate as well, very rich, and looks like it belongs in a castle setting. I never get bored looking at the design of the castle and its grounds. I thought it was stunning, and they did a wonderful job. Fifth compliment is for the main three staff in the castle, Mrs. Potts, Cogworth, Cogsworth, and Lumiere. First off, the voice acting. I think they chose really good actors for those characters. Emma Thompson, Ian McKellen and Ewan McGregor did a stellar job. But as far as the design goes, I want to give a specific shout out to Mrs. Potts. She looks like real China. I am stunned that the animators were able to make them look so real. They're so beautiful. I know that there's a lot of debate over Mrs. Potts design as far as where her face is placed, but I understand why they went in that direction. That really doesn't bother me too much. But the way that she is rendered, especially lighting, how objects and people react to lighting when they're CGI makes a huge difference in if they look realistic or not. And the way the light plays off of her is so believable. I am so impressed with how Mrs. Potts and Chip look on screen. My compliment does extend to Cogsworth as well. He looks stunning as well. They did an amazing job with Cogsworth. But I am just blown away at the china of Mrs. Potts and Chip. They did such a good job. Number six is Be Our Guest. I was pretty skeptical going into this movie, wondering if they'd be able to make Be Our Guest, Guest be impressive at all because it is such an over-the-top animated number that I didn't think they'd be able to realize very well in reality, but I think they did a pretty good job. While watching it, I am pretty darn impressed. I am entertained. All of the motion, the choreography, the colors, it's pretty stunning, and I found I was enjoying myself while watching it. So I'm pleased to say that Be Our Guest made my list. Number seven is the direction that they decided to go with the beast and how they decided to make him more smart and intellectual. I think that's a pretty good idea and it 
mostly worked. It wasn't executed as well it, as well as it could have been, I think, because they did kind of start kind of cling on to the animated a little bit, which was a totally different character. But in this one, they made it so he was much smarter and much more sophisticated and him and Belle related over books and things like that. And I think that is a very interesting way to have them have a connection instead of having it be like she was helping him become more humane. In this one, they had it more like she was helping him open his eyes. He had become very pessimistic about the world and she was helping him realize that there is stuff to enjoy and he wanted to become better and part of the world again. Because I have seen that before in other adaptations and other storytellings of Beauty and the Beast is they do do that with the Beast is they make him more sophisticated in that way. And I felt like that was a very interesting idea. Even if they didn't execute it as well as they could have, I think that was a very interesting direction to take the Beast character. Number eight is my favorite scene with Belle and the Beast together. It's when they're outside sitting on a bench in the snow and their relationship progresses in such a wonderful way. And it is the first real time that they have a genuine bonding experience. And it's kind of in two parts. The first part is so playful and it's kind of an icebreaker in a way because they really haven't had any genuine conversations yet. And I just think it is so well written. What are you reading? Nothing. Guinevere and Lancelot. Well, actually, King Arthur and the Round Table, knights and men and swords and things. Mm. Still, it's a romance. All right. It's just so cute and so genuine, and I feel like that little back and forth really does play well. And then the second part, towards the end of the scene, they have a real connection and they genuinely bond. You know how to have a good time. Yes. When I enter the room, laughter dies. Me too. The villagers say that I'm a funny girl, but I'm not sure they mean it as a compliment. Sorry. Your village sounds terrible. <laughs> Almost as lonely as your castle. I love this dialogue because for the first time and kind of the only time they have a real connection and you can feel their relationship grow and progress in a very positive way. I love this scene with Beast and Belle. I feel like it was written, executed, and acted very believably and it really does make me feel something. It's my favorite scene with Beast and the Belle together. Number nine is a joke that I actually find really funny. <laughs> It's towards the end when the servants are getting the beast all dolled up for his dance with Belle. They're kind of trying to copy the joke from the original where they overdo it and then there's a silly reveal. But I actually think it works in this one because they make it make sense in the context of this film. Because at the beginning of the movie we see how he is dolled up. They put powder on his face, they put the elaborate wig on, and that's how he gets ready for a fancy event. And so in this scene, it makes sense that they would kind of do the same thing for a joke. Eyes closed. And to top it all off. Voila. <laughs> oh man, I actually find that very funny because they made it make sense in this movie. And once again, I think it was acted well, executed very well. It was cut in a very quippy and funny way. That joke actually makes me laugh. Number 10 is the song Evermore. I know that there's a lot of people who don't like this song, but I am not among them. I really like it. I think the music is lovely. I think the lyrics are very sweet and sincere and Dan Stevens does a great job performing it. When the movie came out, I listened to this song on repeat for a long time. She's never out of sight. love it. I do kind of miss the big roar that he does at the in the animated movie. I think that does kind of fit the story and the plot a little bit better, but I also love this song. I think it is very sweet and it helps us connect with the beast more and feel his emotions. I love the song Evermore. And here's a bonus one. I just want to list off a few of my favorite lines from the movie, just real quick. I love a line that Belle says to the bookshop keeper in her village. Where did you run off to this week? 
Two cities in northern Italy. I didn't want to come back. Have you got any new places to go? I feel like that was a really good line to just kind of sum up Belle's feelings and how she yearns for adventure, wants to go see new places, and wants to break out of this small town. I felt like that was a really good, concise way to get that message across. <laughs> Next one is a joke from Lumiere. Nothing, nothing. Storage space. Storage space. That's it. That's it. Yes, that's it. This way, please, to the east wing. Or, as I like to call it, the only wing. <laughs> I don't know why, but that is a joke that really does make me laugh. Another is a lyric that was given to Belle in the song Days in the Sun. I was innocent and certain, now I'm wiser but unsure. Innocent and certain, now wiser and unsure. I feel that just like sums up life. So there you have it. There are 10 things that I actually liked from the remake Beauty and the Beast movie. And I'm hoping that this positive video will help balance out the negative energy that I put out towards this movie at least a little bit. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye. Hey, do you want to come make a cameo? Did you just do a door dash? For you. <gasps> for me? When you're done. Thank you, love. Love you.